Forget it, Stu. I'm not doing the whole throw the bouquet thing. Yeah? Well, you're not a woman. It's like legalized cockfighting. Oh, I don't know. Yellow? Uh, either one. Okay, yeah. Oh! I, I gotta go. I just hit my mom. Stu says hi. No. Because I... Okay, I'll call you later. Me too. Wedding plans. Getting tired of the either or questions. Rose boutonnieres, white or yellow. Should the guests throw birdseed or blow bubbles at us? Patience, Amy. You know little boys spent their entire lives planning their dream weddings. Oh, nice mom. This is his first. He wants it to be perfect. And, and speaking of that, uh, Stu wanted to know if... Uh, never mind. What? Well, we need a caterer, and Stu knew that, that you and Jared were happy with... Never mind. I forget I said anything. Jillian was taking care of all that. But I believe the name was Prime Affair Catering. Sorry, Mom. Should have brought it up. I'm not sensitive about catering, Amy. If it'll keep Stuart from calling every 15 minutes, I, I'm, I'm happy to help. So, I hate toast. See, half the case is on our docket. She calls a 10 minute recess after every hearing. Why? So she can do her nails, shop online. I've never seen anyone more bored by the law. Did she put more pictures of boats up in my office? There are no more pictures of boats. Judge Gray. Hey, Donna. Hi, Bruce. Hey, Donna. Hi. The uh, parties in the Genovese case have reached a plea agreement. Well, subject to your approval. Remind me? Henry Genovese ran over a priest. Uh, assault with intent to murder, assault with a deadly weapon. Reckless endangerment. The Catholic Church can't catch a break these days, huh? Yeah, well, tried 2,000 years. <laughs> I'll see you back at the office, Judge Gray. Good morning. Hey, Zola. You want to join us? I'm meeting a client soon. Just thought I'd say hi. I'll talk to you later. Okay. I've got a case for you. I am implementing a five-minute rule. No one needs to talk to me about work within five minutes of my arrival. You may say good morning. You may offer me a cup of coffee. You may compliment me on my outfit, but under no circumstances are you to hit me with a case the moment I walk in. Ten-year-old boy called 911, scared to death of his mother's new living boyfriend. The police couldn't find the mother, so they brought him here. Oh, for heaven's sake. You know him? Yes. And I'm fairly certain I know what he's about to say. Good morning. Good morning. This one's really bad, Mrs. Gray. He yells all the time, and he's big. Has this one hit you? Not yet. Has he threatened to hit you? Sort of. The way he looks at me. It's like he wants to kill me. I'm not lying, Mrs. Gray. He's horrible, and he hates me. And he's a drug addict. That's a serious thing to call someone, Avery. But he is. He met my mom in a clinic where they get you off drugs. I'm afraid to go home after school. I'm scared to go to sleep at night. 
Do I have to wait for him to hurt me before he'll do something? No. Call your mother. I will do as I have done in the past. I will arrange for a home visit and I will have a little chat with them. Um... Glenn. Yeah, uh, yes, this message is for Glenn Orth. Orth. Uh, this is Maxine Gray with the Department of Children and Families. Mr. Orth, I'm going to need some of your time as soon as possible. I thought you two worked out a deal. The state offered to let him plead to assault and battery with a dangerous weapon, recommending probation. Your Honor, against my advice, Mr. Genovese has declined the offer. Why? Um, I, I want a trial, Your Honor. I strongly advise you to listen to your attorney. He's not my attorney. Since when? Right now. You're firing him? Uh, yes, ma'am. You're fired. Uh, this, Your Honor, this Wait, is... wait, wait. Who's going to represent you? Me. You do realize that if you're convicted of the felony charges, you could be sentenced to state prison? Yeah, I don't care. All right. My chambers. Round and round, round and round, the wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. The wipers on the bus go swish, 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 swish. The wipers on the bus go swish, 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 all through the town. The horn on the bus goes beep, 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 beep. The horn on the bus goes beep, beep, beep. All through the town. Oh, you did a great job. Did your mommy's do good? Okay, I'll see you on Friday. Boy, you really hated that class. <laughs> Was I too perky? Because sometimes people think I'm too perky. No, I'm, I'm a little out of it this time around. I did these classes with my son, Ned. I don't know if it's normal to be less interested. Or maybe I'm just a, a bad mother. I don't know. No, each experience is unique. You know, you're not the same person you were the first time around either, are you? Listen, I uh, do a little bonding therapy on the side as kind of a way to combine my talents. So what would you tell someone who doesn't know who she is anymore? Actually, I have some exercises for that. Uh, one of them, you record your dreams, but, oh, there's another one. Well, you write your own obituary. It's amazing. No, I'm serious. You just think about the way other people would describe you, and then you just kind of see how you feel about that. Well, it's kind of morbid, isn't it? Well, it's not about death. It's about the rest of your life. You can't force me to have an attorney. Defendants representing themselves in gender undue sympathy from a jury. Well, I, I can't prevent him, provided he's competent. Do you have any history of mental health hospitalizations? No. What's your level of education? Well, I graduated high school and I went to community college for a year. Any formal training in the law? I watch court TV. Okay, you're going to be going up against a seasoned prosecutor. You're going to have to cross-examine witnesses, argue your case before a jury. Since you have no knowledge of the rules of evidence, you won't know what's admissible and when to object to damaging material. I, I really think you're making a big mistake. I'll tell the truth. It's that simple. Uh, no, it's not, and you're going to find that out. I, I, I'd like to appoint a lawyer for Mr. Genovese. I, I just won't to... talk to another lawyer. You're going to be all alone. Well, what else is new? I find the defendant competent to represent himself. Stubborn and self-destructive, but competent. So make sure Mr. Genovese uh, gets copies of all relevant documents and the trial will start tomorrow. Thank you, Your Honor. Avery hates every guy I've been with since his dad, but Glenn is a good guy. Avery says Glenn yells a lot. It's from Brooklyn, they yell. I should have started these biscuits earlier. My husband always wanted dinner on the table at exactly six o'clock. We don't always get what we want. Glenn has had it rough, but he kicked a meth habit, and he's just got a mechanic's job, and he helps me stay sober. I'm happy to hear it, Tina. Perhaps, Glenn, 
Avery just needs some time to adjust. Hey, honey. Hey. This is Maxine Gray. She's from the DCF, and she's just here to check on... I know what they do. You should probably go. I think that he's had a bad day. Mr. Orth, I hope you got my message. Do you mind if I ask, how is your relationship with Avery? Do you enjoy spending time with him? What goes on inside these four walls is nobody's business. So you can leave. Well, the state... The state can get the hell out of my house. Maxine, please, just go. For Helm said she was going to Melissa Blanton's sleepover, and so was Piper Mills. Who's Melissa Blanton? Oh, the coolest girl in the sickest grade. Jennifer said Melissa never invites me because I never invite her. So can I have a sleepover? Sure. Uh, this weekend? It's a little soon, isn't it? Melissa Blanton might not be available on such short notice. Uh, but she is. I already asked her. Oh, Lauren! Uh, please, Mom. Uh, all right, yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. We'll do our nails, watch Sound of Music. You want me to make friends, right? Sure. Here's the deal. Unless the house is on fire, we won't be seeing you. Proceed, Mr. Basir. Do you attend services at St. Luke's, Mrs. Psycho? No, I never stepped foot in it. I was waiting for the bus in front of the church. There was a blue car parked just down the street. Well, I thought it was parked, but it wasn't. Because all at once, it came speeding up the street, plowed through a crosswalk, and hit that man. Let the record show that the witness has indicated Father Jack Monroe. The record shall so indicate. A except I didn't know he was a priest. He, he was wearing regular clothes. A couple of the people got out of the way, but the car seemed to steer for the father. Well, is it possible that the car was trying to avoid hitting the other cars? Approach, Your Honor. Yeah. Henry, Mr. Genovese, come on. All due respect, Your Honor, it's the defense's job to ask those questions. Mr. Genovese is inexperienced, so if I need clarification from time to time, I'm going to ask for it. Please, not my objection. Noted. Let's continue. Is it possible that the car was avoiding the others? Oh, it didn't look like an accident to me. What happened after Father Monroe was hit? The car stopped. It sat until the police came. That's when I saw who was in it. Him. Again, let the record show that the witness has now indicated the defendant. The record shall so indicate. No further questions, Your Honor. <clears throat> Mr. Genovese. It's time for you to cross-examine the witness. Um, uh, no thank you, Your Honor. You're not going to question the witness? Is there nothing in her testimony that you wish to challenge? No. This is your only chance. <sighs> the witness may step down. So you know Gretchen the candy striper? She gets hit on like seven times a day, but never goes out with anybody. Anybody here? Yeah, what well, word is? She's a dude. Hand to God, man. There's a tent nurse in surgery. She works at a gender reassignment <laughs> clinic. No, I'm serious. Gretchen <laughs> begged her not to say anything. So she told you? What did I say? People trust me. <laughs> Have you heard anything about the new attending physician? My sources say you've got nothing to worry about. Meaning that it's going to be me or that I really, really like the guy they choose? Think about it. You've been in the trenches with us and you've been in the elevator with Dr. Redeker. Well, don't worry, boys. I'll only be a minute and then you can get back to discussing whatever girl you were discussing. 
We were actually wondering when you're going to announce the new attending. Tomorrow. Well, we should all go out for happy hour and toast the lucky guy. Well, well girl, but most likely a uh, guy. Good day, boy. Oh, yeah. Up high. records you requested on Glenorth. Five minute rule, Sean. I thought that was just in the morning. I'm not waiting five minutes in the middle of the workday. Fine, new rule. Be seated at my desk rule. I must be seated at my desk for five Glen Glenorth's own children were removed because of domestic violence and drug abuse. He's going to say he's cleaned up his act. I've met with his current employer, who says that Glenn has not missed one day of work and is getting along swimmingly with his pro magnum co-workers. Is there a fax for me? You know, without concrete evidence, we're arguing that Avery's mother has questionable taste in men. I don't think we really want the state involved in that. Many states are already involved in that, Sean. And right now, I wish that Connecticut were one of them. It's only a matter of time before Avery gets hurt and his mother is neither willing nor able to protect him. I believe you, right? But we can't go into court with nothing but the boy who cried wolf. If you'll remember, Sean, there was an actual wolf at the end of that story, and he ate everybody. Ah, he missed his last two drug screenings. How'd you get that? Um, Who sent it? Oh, very good friend. Glenn could be using again. But I still say it is not the strongest case. I really think we... Okay, new rule. To let your boss finish his sentence rule. Buddy, are you up here? I'm off to the health food co-op to pick up organic vegetables. It's almost time for Walt to start real baby food, and I know you're going to want to make your own. Well, the stuff in jars is just as good. <laughs> you're kidding, right? When Ned was little, you insisted on making it from scratch. Well, what are you saying? That I don't love Walt as much as Ned? Of course not. People change and grow. I'm a different person now. Okay, I'll, I'll pick up some of the jars. No, forget it. I'll do it. Jillian, can we please talk about... No, we can't. I'll be back in an hour. Zola, hi. Is this a bad time? No. No, no. Come in. You need to talk to me about this? No. Um, this is awkward, but it's Bruce. Since the rape trial, he looks at me differently. In some ways, I know he's closer to you than he is to me. If you're suggesting that I've been whispering in his ear about... I'm not. Really? I'm... I think I'm losing him. I came to ask for help or advice or... He respects you. Well, Bruce is a very private man and however he may respect me, he keeps his own counsel. Which is a polite way of saying I've come to the wrong place. So, like, I know you don't like me, but what if I'm the best thing that ever happened to your friend? You know how he is. He, he shuts people out. He builds walls. More like fortresses. But I got in, and now he's seized on this one event to push me away. I don't think he's going to throw away your relationship over this one issue. I can feel the door closing. Whatever you may think of me, please know that I love Bruce with all of my heart. If there's anything you can do, I'll talk to him.
I don't know, Stu. Tell them it's an old family tradition. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, I gotta go. Okay, bye. Another wedding crisis? Stu can't decide if he deserves to wear white. <laughs> you know what, Mom? You're really gonna have to help me out here. I don't know whether to include you in the wedding plans or never bring them up. Well, that explains why you stop talking whenever I come in the room. I thought for a moment you were planning a surprise party for me. You know what? I don't care what you say. This must be hard on you. I mean, the truth is, if, if Jared hadn't passed away, you... Amy, you are getting married, and I am not. Don't make an opera out of it. As for plans, include me, don't include me, it's entirely up to you. But believe me, this wedding cannot come soon enough, because that will be the day Stu Collins stops bringing the phone off the wall. Okay, for my own edification... Do you even like Stu? Do you approve of this wedding? Oh, for heaven's sake, Amy. Be a grown-up. Avery? It's Glenn. What did he do? He left. Are you happy now? Tina, I don't... Snooping I... around his work, talking to his boss. And he left? Why can't you just mind your own business? Glenn isn't perfect. But he kept food on the table and he kept me sober. We could have been happy. <laughs> it's okay, Mom. I'm here. <laughs> Father Monroe, explain to us, please, what, if anything, you remember about the afternoon of the 16th. I like the tuna melts at the little diner across the street from St. Luke's. As I stepped into the crosswalk, I heard a car engine. It seemed to be coming out of nowhere. I remember trying to get out of the way. Realizing I couldn't. Could you describe your injuries for us, Father? Objection. We, we, we have his medical records and evidence. Yes, Your Honor. Perhaps he could give a brief summary. Proceed. My spinal cord was severed. I've lost the use of both my legs. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Genovese, you may cross-examine. So, why'd you change your name? What do you mean? Ten years ago, you were Father Tim in Greensboro. What, did the church move you here to keep you from going to jail? Objection, Your Honor. I don't know what you're talking about. Sustained. Mr. Genovese, are you claiming a prior relationship with Father Monroe? It's Father Tim. What do I do? I look a little different now? Yeah, I, I was only 11 the first time you kept me after Bible study. You deserve that wheelchair. This is outrageous. I've never seen that. I do not know this man. Your Honor, Mr. Genovese just admitted that he ran over Father Monroe on purpose. I did not hear those words, Mr. Basir. What are you saying? You know, I get these, these nightmares. And I can't even sleep. Objection, Your Honor. He should answer your question. Well, maybe he would have a chance if you sat down and let him. Be careful, Mr. Genovese. Watch what you are saying. I don't see my family anymore. So I moved here like three months ago. A clean slate. And I was, I was doing really good, too. I was. I thought, this is a new town. It's, it's, it's a new church. Maybe I can go back. So I went to St. Luke's, and there he was, saying mass, Father Tim. Well, I knew right then I had to do something. I didn't know what, 
but I knew I had to at least let you know that I was watching you. So the next day I went and I waited out front of the church and when he came out, I didn't think, I just, I just sped up. I was 11 and you were a priest. Your Honor, I, no, wait. Ten years ago, I was in Salisbury, England, getting my doctorate. I came back to the United States two years ago. Father, you know... I wasn't even in the country. He, he has a tattoo. He has a tattoo on his right arm. It's of a Roman cross. Show them. Show them. No, no. Father, Father, do, show do not tattoo. show Objection, us. Objection, Your Honor. have been instructed to disregard It wasn't the... me. You had that tattoo removed. Oh, Mr. You Trinity, had, please. had it removed. People do that all the time. You told my parents to punish me Mr. for Genesee, lying. Mr. Genovese, stop talking. I will no, have How would I know he has a tattoo? And Father Martin was there Mr. every Genovese, single please. Wednesday when you let your Your Honor, Honor. Go Mr. And you let stop I prayed and he said something. I prayed and he never did. Your Honor. My parents don't believe me. My own parents don't believe me. Well, believe I me. believe you. It just wasn't me. You rang? Why did you let me take this job? I heard. We're off session, huh? It was so horrible. I should never have let the jury hear any of it. So? Why did you? I don't know. Maybe I'm not cut out for this. My fault. I shouldn't let you take this job. <laughs> Let's go get something to eat. Oh, I can. I should go home and get ready for Lauren's slumber party. Why did you call? Zola came to see me. About what? She thinks she's losing you. Is she? Is this about the rape trial? Because she was just doing her job, Bruce. That was the right way to defend her client. Personally, I don't like those tactics, but that's why I'm not a defense lawyer. She's one of the best. You're right. All right. I get it. You don't want to talk about this. I don't know what to say. Because you don't know how you feel or because we suck at the friend thing? She... She loves you, Bruce. So much so that she came to me. You can't keep shutting her out forever. You're right. Really? I'll call her tomorrow. Is that all? Yeah. Okay. Don't drink that sweet with me. Let me let me go downstairs and get his cappuccinos from the cart guy. This'll do. Mm -hmm. Bet Sloan Kettering has a cart guy stationed right in the doctor's lounge. And a massage therapist and supplies that were manufactured after World War II. <laughs> it's not gonna be you, Kyle. You're talking about the, the attending job. We're going with someone else. A thoracic surgeon from Barnes. St. Louis. I understand that. What with the shortage of local talent. Kyle, don't. What happened? God. I'm qualified. I, 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 I thought it was going to come down to your recommendation. It did. I'm sorry. Come on, Kyle. You were along. No, I was not. 
Even if I had no concerns about your personal problems, which I do... You, you, you nixed me because you thought I was going to start using again? On a good day, this job is a two-ton truck bearing down on you and a hurricane just offshore. <laughs> I would not feel good putting that kind of pressure on you. And you have no idea how that pressure is going to affect the thoracic surgeon from St. Louis. I'm being penalized because you know me. I think I did the right thing. You always do. You're home early. How are you feeling? Came home early to ask me that. You seem depressed. I'm not depressed. Well, you seem that way, and uh, you won't talk to me about it. I'm fine. You're not fine. You wrote your own obituary, loving wife and mother. You read my journal? I know it's a terrible violation of your privacy. And a manipulative, hostile act. You don't think I'm depressed? You want to micromanage my life. You're the mother of my kids. If you're suicidal, I need to know about it. It was an exercise that Cecile told me about. Your mommy and me instructor? She's also a therapist. The point was to see how I felt about the description of myself. How did you feel? Julian. You're a, you're a wonderful person. And a great wife, and an amazing mother, and and you took those art classes, and you were really good. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you've taken time out of your lives, away from your jobs and families, to participate in our judicial system, and I want to thank you for your service. You are now excused. The court officer will see you out. Your Honor, what is this? As soon as the jury is out of the room, I will be happy to discuss the details. Please give these to Mr. Basir and Mr. Genovese. Let the record show that this morning I ordered Mr. Genovese evaluated by a court clinician to determine if he suffers from a psychological disorder and is therefore unfit to represent himself. You ruled on that issue, Your Honor. Yes. But after yesterday's outburst, I felt that I didn't have all the information. So based on questions raised in the report you have in your hands, the interests of justice and manifest necessity compel me to declare this a mistrial. I have to object. You found him competent. Without all the information. Counselor, if I had known about the alleged sexual abuse, I would never have declared him competent. As it is, he has not received a proper defense. And I am appointing a lawyer to counsel him and hopefully represent him in a new trial. No, I did it. I should be punished. That's for a jury to determine. I don't want another trial. Well, you don't get a say. All due respect, Your Honor, you have protected him throughout this entire proceeding. Thank you. We're done here. Sure, I can't get you something to eat? I'm good. Look, um, I know why you're here, and I'm sorry. You have no reason to apologize. Amy told you I came to see you? Yes, yes, I'm, I'm glad you did. <laughs> it was a mistake. It wasn't. She gave me a serious talking to about treating you right. Made me think. I haven't been very open with you lately. You're a warrior, Zola. And I respect the fact that you're fighting the fight, I do. But? And... I don't want to live in a war zone. It's too hard and life's too short. So, it's over. Just like that. Not just like that. I'm not doing this lightly. But we're just too different. Because I'm a warrior? That's a load of crap. What was that show in the courthouse? What show? Jason Darby. On the steps. I just can't get that 
image out of my mind. And smiling, holding on to him. Your two hands up in the air together. There's one thing to defend him, but you were celebrating him. I won a big case. I did my job well. That's what I was celebrating. Right. It was about the win. Can't we just get past this? It was one moment. That's who you are. Must be nice to get it right every time. What's it like up there? I'm sorry. That's who I am. Going to sleep soon? I'm going to bed. Whether or not to go to sleep is entirely up to that gaggle of giggling pre-adolescents upstairs. I'll try to keep them quiet with food. Hi, Mrs. Cray. Hi, Janice. Girls having fun up there? Yeah. I just felt like taking a break. Need some help? Sure. Um, your kids. You okay? Yeah. I just had a rough day. Me too. Oh, 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 oh I'm sorry, call him. No, no, no. Hey, hey. You have terrible taste in girls. <laughs> and Janice Witherspoon is a total dork. Oh. <gasps> I thought she was your friend. You thought wrong. <laughs> Tell him about the pillow. Okay. <laughs> she brought a Winnie the Pooh pillow to the sleepover. Oh, and she still wets I the bed. She still wets the bed. <laughs> What's going on, Lauren? Um, uh, we're just IMing some friends. I heard. I came out to tell you that Janice isn't having a very good time, but I guess you already know that. Chill, Mrs. Gray. We're just playing around. How would you feel if somebody did that to you? They wouldn't. I'm not a geek. <laughs> okay, I know you girls think you invented being snotty and exclusive and cruel, but you didn't. In my junior high, your names were Christy and Lisa and barb and you know what they weren't popular they were feared kind of like snakes and after graduation there was a stampede of people fleeing them get your things together i'm taking you home i could be a shipping clerk Yes, you could. You'd look very cute in those little brown shorts. No, no, you're you're thinking about delivery. I wouldn't do that. I would be the clerk. Oh. Like, it would not be an attending physician job, but it would pay the bills. And I wouldn't have to worry about anybody stabbing me in the back. Do you, do you really think that Arnie, the guy who puts the stuff in the boxes, is going to come try to undermine me at my little desk job? What if he always dreamed of being a clerk and you waltzed in and get the job? Arnie could be trouble. Come on. You saw that. He started it. He started it. Call 911. Where are you going? He's not breathing. Help me. No way. It's okay, I'm a doctor. I need a, a, a tube or a, or a straw. Give me a straw and some towels. That's it. You're doing great, man. Oh my god. He's breathing. Don't act like 
like this is my fault. This night could have turned out very differently. I didn't do anything. Well, you should have. Janice is your friend. And even if she wasn't, you should have stood up for her. She didn't say anything. She should have stood up for herself. Some people can't, Lauren. This is not who you are going to be. Do you hear me? Do you know what Melissa, Jennifer, and Piper are doing right now? Emailing every girl in school to tell them what just happened. I don't care. I don't care if you graduate from high school, the friendless wonder. Nice work, Mom. You just turned me into the biggest loser on the planet. Watch your back. I'd like to ride along, keep an eye on it. Are you related? No, I'm a doctor. I did the tracheotomy. Then we didn't have this conversation. You saved him, you went home, I didn't even get your name. Like you said, I saved him. And you're also drunk eight different ways, which means you're a lawsuit waiting to happen, Doc. Now I'm cutting you a break. Go. Everybody get home all right? Yeah. What are you watching? History Channel. But I'm just killing time. I was waiting for you to get home so we can watch the movie. What well, movie? Sound of Music. You paid three bucks. Somebody ought to watch it. Oh, I don't know, Mom. I think I've kind of sort of had it with me and little kids tonight. I'm not in the mood to watch Brigitte put a frog down Maria's dress. So I ruined Lauren's life because Melissa and her cronies will never speak to her again. My daughter hates me. For now. She'll, she'll stomp around for a couple of days and oh, give the hairy eyeball, but I guarantee you she's relieved. You think? Do you remember that, uh, that horrible little barb from your junior high? Oh, yeah. Amy, I'm sorry about any unpleasant remarks that I may have made about your wedding. I miss Jared. And I've taken it out on you and Stu. I know. I want you to be happy. In theory. <laughs> However hard it is for me to hear about yellow roses and throwing bird seeds and if Stuart Collins is the right man. What do you mean if? Don't you like Stu? Oh honey, I'm not in the business of choosing other people's life mates. I, I'm going on the premise that you know who will make you happy. And perhaps you should too. Do you remember what happens after Brigitte puts the frog down Maria's dress? Uh, yeah, yeah. There's the scene where Maria goes down to dinner. Mm -hmm. and, and, and she she sends all those little brats on this massive guilt trip about how mean they've been to her. Yeah, yeah. And then the captain can't figure out why all his kids are bawling their eyes out. And Maria <laughs> just smiles. <laughs> Well, what do, you, what do you say we uh, we put the movie in, we fast forward to that scene, and we'll just watch it over and over again. I think it's the best idea I've ever heard in my life. Uh, okay. Um, where's the, uh... Where's the... Oh, Mom, you always... You can do this. No, let's see. It's something. Oh, gosh. Wait, hold it. Can you get this? This one here? I got it. I got it. No one stop me. I'm all by myself. No one stop me. Oh, 